Welcome everybody to this series on producing great output with Lightroom 4. I'm Laura Shu, and I'm very happy to be with you. My goal with this series is to teach you not only how to use the buttons and sliders in the book, slideshow, print, and web modules, but also to do the most I can to ensure that you're successful with your output projects. This involves teaching a lot of conceptual output topics along with the individual module how-to. I find from my experience teaching workshops and working with people one-on-one -on -one, that it's these conceptual topics that trip people up much more than the details of how the output modules work. Now let's take a look at the structure of the course. Now within your main folder or set of folders if you ordered the download, you've got several folders. We have a PDF handouts folder this includes a two-page PDF with my favorite output shortcuts. It also includes a complete list of the 55 videos in this series with descriptions of each video. Let's go back to the main folder here. Now the rest of these folders all contain videos. Of course, you've seen the introduction folder because you're watching the series introduction. The next set of videos is on output concepts. Now, I consider these critical. I start out by talking about the fundamental issue of why what you see in Lightroom may not be what you get in print or in other output, and what you can do to compensate for this. Then I get into more detail on what monitor calibration is and how to do that process, what printer profiles are, how to find them and install them, color spaces and soft proofing, etc etc now this consists of two and a half hours of training i know that some of you will not want to watch two and a half hours of conceptual training before you get to the output modules what i would suggest if you're not up for this is that you at least here in the main folder in the pdf handouts come into the video descriptions pdf and read this section on output concepts to familiarize yourself with what's covered in these videos so that as I refer to these concepts when we're working through the output modules, you know which videos to refer back to for more background. Let's go back to the main folder here. Now after the output concepts, we have the getting started folder. I do recommend that before you start on the individual output modules that you come into the getting started folder and watch the video on workflow. This contains my recommendations on all of the steps to go through as you're preparing for your output project. Now the video on watermarking can be watched at any time if and when you're interested in watermarking your photos in output. Finally, when you get to an output module, I would suggest that you watch the videos in the order that I present them, even if there's a particular topic that you're not particularly interested in. For example, you may not be interested in making contact sheets in the print module. However, I introduce functionality that's common to other layout styles here in the print module. So if you don't watch that, you're going to miss lessons on those topics. Now this video series was recorded using a PC, but there's very little difference between the Mac and the PC. The main difference is just in the keys that you use on your keyboard for producing shortcuts. For example, the shortcut for undoing your last step in Lightroom on a PC is Control Z. On a Mac, it's Command Z. The Command key is the Apple key. The other shortcut key difference is Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac. Otherwise, if there are any differences, I'll point them out to you along the way. Now some of you are going to want to watch these videos on your mobile devices, such as your iPad. These are MP4 videos, so they can be downloaded to mobile devices that support MP4s. Let me just go ahead and show you very quickly how you would download them to your iPhone and iPad, because that's what I happen to have. So I'm going to go into iTunes, and I would go up to File, Add Folder to Library, and I would find and select my folder or folders of videos and say select folder here 
I'm going to cancel this because I've already done it. And that would add those videos to iTunes. Next, I would plug in my iPad or iPhone. I would go to the Movies tab and I would sync these movies. Now you can choose to automatically include all the movies on your system that iTunes knows about, or you can uncheck this and just check the individual ones that you want to be able to sync. When you're done with this, then you would simply click on the sync or the apply button and your videos would be copied over to your device. You would then find them and be able to play them in the videos app on your iPad or iPhone. Now the last thing I want to do in this video is just show you where you can find me on the web. Now most of you are familiar with my website, but if you're not, I have lots of free tutorials out there. You can also join my mailing list to get newsletter updates. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. So these are great ways to get informed when I release new blog posts, if I have additional tips for you, if I find other resources on the web that I think you should know about. Okay, so it's time to get started with this series. I hope you enjoy it, and I'd love to hear about your experience with it.